Well, good evening. We're here for our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Um, and we are continuing our look through Judges. We're in Judges 15, and this is, our, I guess, our third look at the life of Samson. Now, uh, Samson, we've seen, has it's kind of ups and downs with him as well. And when last we left Samson, he had uh, been married, um, and he had uh, told a riddle to his, I guess, to the men that were there at the wedding, and made a, I guess you call a wager with them, and said, if you solve the riddle, I'll give you 30 garments of clothes, and if uh, you don't, you have to bring me 30 garments of clothes. And uh, They pressured his wife to tell him the answer to the riddle um and in revenge and she did uh samson then went out to collect the 30 garments by killing 30 philistines and bring them back to clothes and his wife meanwhile had been given away uh by her father to uh one of those 30 men and here we're going to pick up in chapter uh, 15 it says, uh, but after a while, in the time of wheat harvest, Samson visited his wife with a young goat and said, I will go in to my wife in her room. But her father did not let him enter. Her father said, I really thought that you hated her intensely, so I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister more beautiful than she? Please let her be, her, let her be yours instead. Samson then said to them, this time I shall be blameless in regard to the Philistines when I do them harm. Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took torches and turned the foxes tail to tail and put one torch in the middle between two tails. When he had set fire to the torches, he released the foxes into the standing grain of the Philistines, thus burning up both the shocks and the standing grain along with the vineyards and groves. Then the Philistines said, Who did this? And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he took his wife and gave her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Samson said to them, Since you act like this, I will surely take revenge on you, but after that I will quit. He struck them ruthlessly with a great slaughter, and he went down and lived in the cleft of the rock of Edom. Then the Philistines went up and camped in Judah and spread out in Lehi. The men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? And they said, We have come up to bind Samson in order to do him as he did to us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Edom, Edom and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then is this that you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. They said to him, We have come down to bind you, so that we may give you into the hands of the Philistines. And Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me. So they said to him, No, but we will bind you fast and give you into their hands, yet surely we will not kill you. Then they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted as they met him, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, so that the ropes that were on his arms were as flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds dropped from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, so he reached out and took it and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have killed a thousand men. When he had finished speaking, he threw the jawbone from his hand and named that place Ramath Lehi. Then he became very thirsty, and he called to the Lord and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? But God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, so that water came out of it. When he drank, his strength returned, and he revived. Therefore he named it in Hakore, which is Lehi, is in Lehi to this day. So he judged Israel 20 years in the days of the Philistines. Again, more interesting tales from the life of Samson. He goes back to visit his wife and again shows this marriage was not established the way it was supposed to be. As we mentioned last week, he had not left his father and mother. She had not left her father and mother. They had not formed a new family, but they were husband and wife, uh, and not the way they should have done it. But he goes back and does not know that she has been given to someone else. So to get revenge upon all that's happened to him so far, he catches the foxes, puts a torch in them, turns them loose, which is a feat in and of itself. Catching one fox by hand is not easy. Here he caught 
How many did it say there? He said, caught 300 foxes. 300 of them he caught and got revenge against them. This way, I guess you'd say this one hit them in the pocketbook. Was it got, uh, said it burned both the shocks and the standing rain along with the vineyards and the groves. So now, to get revenge kind of against him, they had done stuff to Samson. And Samson, to get revenge against the Philistines, uh, burns their crops. Now, the Philistines seek revenge against him. Uh, they revenged against him by killing Samson's wife and father-in-law. And again, Samson gets revenge against them. He said um, in verse 7, Since you act like this, I will surely take revenge on you. But after that, I will quit. It says, And he says, slaughtered them or struck them ruthlessly in a slaughter. Revenge, revenge, revenge so far in this chapter. But we're not done. They, the Philistines, you know, now are putting pressure on the men of Judah. The men of Judah come to Samson and go, wait a second, you got to remember, we're under control by the Philistines, and here you are riling them up, Samson. It says, what have you done to us? Samson said, as they have done to me, so I have done to them, which is part of the root of the problem. They said, well, we've come to bind you up and give you the Philistines. Well, he says, fine, just do not kill me yourself. They said, no, we won't kill you, but we'll turn you over to them. Again, this shows how far God's people have fallen. The men of Judah are working with the Philistines to surrender their own judge here to say, hey, you riled the Philistines up. We're under them. We're turning you over to them. They'll kill you. We won't, but they're definitely helping, aren't they? Well, they come, the Philistines come where he's bound. They come to attack him. They come yelling at him. So they came, shouted as they met him, it says. And Samson easily, with the strength from the Lord, burst those ropes, breaks those ropes off, picks up a jawbone, and kills a thousand people. So he said, the book of Judges, you see uh, instruments of war used in all things, lamps, ox, uh, goads, uh, jars and here a jawbone but again we know it is not from samson on his own but from the strength of the lord after he kills these thousand men we say see where he um i guess retreated and was thirsty and he he said lord you've helped me you've given me the strength to do this you've delivered me and now i'm going to die of thirst and we saw that god took care of his thirst and noticed that and he opened up the spring and revived it. He goes on to say that Samson judged the Philistines 20 years. We're not to the end of the Samson story yet. We'll see in chapter 16 um, kind of the rest, uh, rest of the story of Samson, some of the more familiar passages about Samson. But here, let's look at a few things we can learn from chapter 15. First, revenge, uh, when it's man's idea, is not a good idea. The book of Romans, chapter 12, starting with verse 17, says this. Romans 12, starting with verse 17, says, Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not over, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So revenge, when it's man's idea, is not the way to go. We see all of chapter 15. They, he got revenge on them, they got revenge on him. He got revenge on them, they got revenge on him. And how many lives were destroyed by doing it that way. Now we know God used this. It's part of his judgment, both on the Philistines and on the people of Israel. But we do not need to come up with our own plans of revenge. Revenge is a vicious circle. <coughs> Excuse me. It just leads to more revenge, and that leads to more revenge. It does not solve it the way we were instructed to, to live our life. Second thing from the last part of this chapter we can learn is that God can do anything. 
we just take that for granted so much. Many of us have studied the Bible a long time or been in Sunday school our whole lives or whatever. We just read this and go, yeah, yeah, Samson killed a thousand men with the jawbone. He did it. Yeah, God calls water to come out of a rock. Bust the rock open so water could come out. Yeah, yeah, he did that. But we see this is from God. God can do anything. We need to cease. I guess we need to be amazed more at what we see in the miracles of God. We see that we just take for granted. We amazed. God can still do anything. Always has been able to and always will. Again, revenge is not from us. We don't need to plot that. We need to be amazed and awe of how God can do anything God wants to do. God is God. Powerful and miraculous. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that we can study. Father, as we look at the life of Samson, help us, uh, again, to learn from this. Father, help us not to seek revenge. Father, we know you are just, and you bring a righteous judgment. But, Father, let us depend on that. Father, not on our own uh, motives for revenge, not our own ways of carrying that out. Father, help us love our enemies and do good to those who persecute us. Father, we thank you that you can do anything. You are... Uh, you do miracles, Father, you still do. And help us be aware of that, Father, to be amazed at that more and to thank you more every time we see that. And we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.